What up, everybody? What's cracking? And welcome back. The Petros and Money Show is on the air on AM570 LA Sports. Your home of the Dodgers and your home of the Genesis. And here we are on the Chevy Silverado Celebrity Microphone with one of the greatest, biggest athletes we've ever done on the show. What an honor. Well, it is uh, time for our conversation with Tiger Woods uh, as he sits across from us. You played this course in 92. It was your first pro event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you played it today from the tournament tees okay. with the same equipment and okay. the same ball, okay. what would you shoot? About the same scores. <laughs> you would. You'd I shoot would. Ball. What were you? Do you remember I what you were playing with back then? No, I, I shot 72-75. Um, I had a Titleist uh, Tour Blotta at the time. Uh, I just had switched over from persimmon into the new TaylorMade burner, um, boron shaft. And Bubble burner? No, no, before that. Oh, before I was, that. I was before that, yeah. It was, a, it was a boron shaft, then Twista Flex came out, and then the bubble came out. So what, what do you remember from that event, and, and why are you back now? Like, what, what happened mm -hmm. in that 10 years plus that you weren't playing this event? Well, I remember that was probably the most nervous I've ever been on a golf course. Um, I had... For some reason, I felt fine, warmed up great, um, hit the ball well on the range, putted, my putting felt great. I got to the first tee, I'm like, this is really no big deal. I got a three-wood in my hand, kind of hit it right down the middle of the fairway, and teed it up, practice swings were solid, get over the ball, and for some reason, my legs got heavy. I took the club back, and I didn't know if I could make it to the top of my backswing. Should I stop, not stop? And I had this conversation with myself all the way up to the top of the swing. Do I stop, not stop? And then I hit it down the middle of the fairway, I made birdie. Um, to start off my tour career. For you, uh, do these places have special memories as far as nostalgia oh, and yeah. things, or do you just look at it in a more, I don't know, computerized way because no, you no, have no. to go out and make a living in these places? No, I, 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 hear your, I hear your point, but you know, from, for me, coming back here to Riviera is, is like going back in time. Uh, I first came out here with my dad. Uh, we were walking and watching some of the Southern Cal guys like John Cook or... Uh, Mark O'Meara. I remember watching Andy Bean play a few holes because he was the longest one there was at the time. Um, Jack, Jack Nicholas was playing. Tom Watson was playing. Uh, Lanny Watkins, one of the years, ran away with the tournament. Uh, these are all things that I, how I remember Riviera. You know, I remember so, so many fond memories with my dad. And then I got a chance to play it. And then on top of that, I got a chance to play it in the LA Open. And that was a dream come true because I was, I was telling uh, Bryson today and, and JT, Justin Thomas, I was playing practice time with them today. And they asked me, you know, what do you remember of 92? I said, you don't, <laughs> you, Justin told me yeah, I was born the, the following year. <laughs> uh, so he said, I don't really recall. So you weren't born yet. <laughs> um, it, it was just a, I don't know, a, a different era. And it's, it's an era that is, you know, long gone, you know, persimmon woods, a lot of balls, and it's all gone. What about golfing in California, Southern California in general, because of your roots here? Does that do anything for you or, or because it you've does, golfed all no, over the world? It does. You know, I love playing in Southern California. We, uh, we had our, our World Challenge tournament up at Sherwood for a number of years. Um, I, done, I did well there. I've done well at La Costa when the Tournament Champions was there. I've done well at Torrey Pines when the U.S. Open or, or you know, the normal uh, PJ Tour events there. Uh, for some reason, the only place I haven't done well is here. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I love the layout. It fits my eye. It's a cutter's golf course. Uh, guys move left to right. It favors us. But for some reason, I just don't play it well. And that's the only reason why I haven't come back is that, you know, I, I may love the golf course, but I wasn't scoring. I wasn't producing numbers. I wasn't playing well. Um, but now my, my foundation runs the event, and that's like a dream come true because this is the staple of all tournaments, you know, in Southern California. You know, my my grandfather, who I call my grandpa, Charlie Charlie Sifford, you know, he won here, won the LA Open here. So um, it means a lot to me. It means a lot to our foundation to come back to Southern California. This is where we started, and now we have a chance to have the premier event in Southern California. You were talking about your foundation a little bit earlier today in the presser and the idea of STEM and, and getting kids into mm -hmm. science and math. And you mentioned Bryson, and we know mm -hmm. he's applied physics to golf. Uh, yeah. You were a great student. You went to Stanford. Yeah. Um, is that golf-based to some degree? Like, did you use a lot of science and math when you were coming up and learning how to play golf? No, I did not. But when I got to Stanford, um, I took a couple of physics classes. I thought that might help with my game. It didn't help at all. <laughs> um, they were really hard. Uh, but, you know, I, I think that as I've gotten on tour because of my, um, my, my feeling towards physics and how that could be applicable to golf, um, it's really helped me in, in uh, golf ball design. 
uh, shaft design as well as club heads, uh, but I also have to equate it to feel. So yeah, the the equipment guys, the engineers who who build the clubs, but also now I gotta equate that to could I feel this when you guys build this, and um, it's a very symbi symbiotic relationship that we've had over the years, and there's been probably two or three guys I've been very close to over the years that can understand my talk and convert it into a truly pure physics. As we're talking about Southern California, both of us live really close to the Long Beach area. I live less than a mile from Navy, so let's oh do yeah, a little. There we go. Yeah. Let's do a little Long Beach course roll call. <laughs> and uh, okay. if you remember your best score um, at each of the courses, and what maybe if there's a nugget, uh, so start with Navy. Do you remember your best score there, and, and anything you remember about that course? Uh, Sixty-three. Um, I remember. I was too young because the the you had to be ten to play it, and so my mom would drop me off uh, right at the gate. I'd walk to the right or head north into the you know the ditch over the old back yeah. nine. I'd hop in the ditch. I'd walk on the south side of the ditch. I'd walk past the, the clubhouse. So they couldn't see on the south side. You could only see the north side of the ditch. I'd walk out past one, past two. I'd be under the bridge at three waiting for my dad to show up. And my dad had a cart. He would show up, and he says, uh, he always called me Sam. I'd say, hey, Sam, you there? Yeah, Pop. <laughs> so said, Come on up. And then he, I'd hop in the <laughs> cart, um, you know, I, you know, my dad was a former sniper, so I guess he taught me how to camouflage myself and <laughs> dig in, <laughs> you know. And, uh, yeah, we'd go out there and play until dark. And then once it got dark, uh, we'd keep playing until you lost a golf ball. So I always had to say I'm going to aim down the right side, hit a two-yard draw. And if I didn't, then I'd lose my ball. Um, but I, I made it all the way to 18 holes one time. We played an entire from number five on in in pitch black darkness. How about Big Wreck? Uh, big wreck. I probably played my best round when I was in high school there. I shot another 62 there. Um, I remember I shot 28 on the front nine and, and really could have gone low on the back nine, but made a couple mistakes. All right, Eldo. Eldo, uh, not as well. Uh, we Again, I played a um, Southern California match play championship there. Um, I shot, s what did I shoot? I shot eight under par, and I won by one. I won one up against this guy from... Um, you know, up in the valley here. All right, and last one, RIP, Cyprus. Well, which one? Because it was Los Alamitos when it was par so Cyprus, 66 right off or something like that. Catella there. Yeah. That first weird, you know, dog leg hard left first hole. Yeah, see, well, don't you remember, it was, lo was Los Alamitos, right? right? So and it was Los Alamitos. Exactly. And when I played at Los Al, I used to love when they had the harness racing going on. And I'd play, you know, what, 15, 16 right there around the corner. I could just love to hit the ball up over the, the racetrack. <laughs> Uh, just make sure you just don't don't hook it because you might hit a horse. Um, <laughs> but that's how I remember those holes. Tiger Woods is our guest. Very exciting day on the Petros and Money Show. Now you mentioned Stanford, and and we know you're a big Stanford sports fans, and we both uh, we both work in college sports mm -hmm. and uh, get to do Stanford games. And I actually played football, if you believe it or not, at USC. Okay. And I have a memory that I have to share with you. Got it. Uh, it's been many years uh, that I've held this, and okay. I'm going to I'm going right. to give it up. It's the year 2000. Stanford okay. was hosting USC. They still had the track and before they changed the stadium. Yeah, yeah. You were on the sideline. You were skinnier then. A lot. Less intimidating. Lot. Now a you're kind of swollen. <laughs> and uh, I got tackled maybe about a five-yard loss okay. by a gentleman by the name of Coy Wire. Okay. Remember what, Coy? Well, no, I don't. But what position uh, you play? I was a tailback, okay. believe it or not. Were you all thinking right. guard? Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I was a tailback, so I got tackled for a loss okay. by Coy Wire, and basically you were straddling my face okay. uh, because I was tackled, and you weren't intimidated by people being tackled in the sideline. Right. You'd spent time on the sideline, I could tell. And you kind of pumped your fist like you won the Masters, yeah, yeah. like over me, like you <laughs> tackled me, and you didn't. And I stood up, and I was screaming at you in my, through my mouthpiece, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you did not, you just, you know, went on like clapping, like good play, right. coy or something. And uh, I don't really know if I want you to answer. I just needed to tell you that that happened. <laughs> that made my life a lot better. Thank be you. Be because <laughs> I was like really resentful. I really feel more enriched. For a Thank long you. time, I was really <laughs> resentful. Like, man, Tiger Woods didn't tackle me. <laughs> you know, it was coy wire. Right. But it has to be pretty gratifying watching Stanford football today. I tell you what, we've, we've gone through our, our paces. We've had our ups and downs. Um, but uh, I think what um, well my my two years there we had Bill Walsh oh yeah and then Ty Willingham mm -hmm. and so I got to 
be be pretty close with with both of them, and uh, those are kind of the, the glory years for me. Now your body has changed. Oh my God! You yes, know yeah. a, a lot since those days, and and you, you're coming back. You know we're around the same age, yeah. and, and you look a lot better than than mm. me. Uh, <laughs> talk about just uh, your body now, and and how you feel. And yeah, and you know, um, I feel a hell of a lot better now. I mean, last year was not not a very good time. Um, my disc had basically collapsed, and I was bone to bone. And everything I did, uh, we tried everything that's under the sun besides having surgery, and nothing worked because my disc had fully collapsed. And so the only option I had left was really fusion. And when they mentioned the word fusion, I'm thinking, you know, I, will I be able to play golf again? And they said, well, there's a really good chance you'll be able to play golf again uh, because you're at the, the lower limit of L5, S1. Um, you're only going to lose about six degrees of rotation. But my surgeon kept telling me, he said, you're going to have more speed than you've had in about 10 years. I said, well, guy, I can barely walk. And so I was pretty hesitant about having the surgery. I had the surgery, and then uh, six months later, uh, I started feeling really good. And he says, okay, now you can progress. Um, I kept contact with him almost every day, daily, about, you know, what should I do, what can't I do, uh, what kind of feeling I'm feeling. And he was, um, he was pretty adamant that I was going to have – probably about nine months from surgery that it was going to take for me to feel like my, my toe again. I'd, I'd lost the feeling in my toe. Wow. And so he was right. It, it happened about 10 months, and I feel fantastic. Um, I got my speed back up. And more importantly, I've got my, my quality of life back. Um, it was just a, a very, very difficult t m uh, probably six months. Um, I had to be helped out of bed every day. Um, I mean, <laughs> it was pretty sad when uh, I can't get to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Um, I had to have a bucket next to the bed, to be honest with you. And it, it was really bad. It was a real rough time. And I didn't know this is how my life is going to be for the rest of my life. Um, but he, I was, I've been very lucky and very blessed to have come out on, on this side. And I have a chance to, you know, talk to you guys and uh, play golf again and do things that I never thought I could be able to do again. So when that's going on and you're thinking, you know, this happens in every athlete's career, golf's different, you get to play a lot longer, but when you think about what's, what's next, is that where kind of course design comes in, staying involved? How did that all come well, up? Because uh, I have yeah, a friend yeah. who mo I literally moved earth at Diamante, was yeah, one yeah. of the guys okay. down there. Okay. So, um, like, how did that all come up? Well, I wanted to, I, I only got into course design when I played on every continent, and I got to understand how golf is being played around the world. And... Until I did that, I didn't feel like I had um, the understanding of, of how golf should be played or can be played and what adjustments or w what can I add to the game of golf with my core design. Um, that's why I entered it is because I think I can help the game of golf. I think I can make it faster. I can make it more playable. Um, I can have people not feel like they're part of a death march of going out there and playing for five, six hours because, quite frankly, we don't have that in our day and age. Everyone can't go within 10 minutes without looking at their cell phone. And so how, how do you expect kids, especially, to be able to play, f you know, five-hour rounds? That's just not um, – uh, it's just something that I don't see society ever changing and de-evolving de to. So I, I've tried to – at Diamante, tried to Blue Jack to try and speed up play. Um, the rounds that we have there at, at Blue Jack are the best because they average about 315, um, even during the middle of the day. And so that's what I, what I think I can add to the game of golf. I know we scratched the surface. Just real quick, the foundation. Anything we missed? Uh, you talked about it a little bit earlier in the press conference about STEM and what you're <coughs> trying to do yeah, um, yeah. just to build on that. Yeah, we changed our name today, um, which is something we're very excited about it. Um, went from the Tiger Woods Foundation to the TGR Foundation. Uh, we've got different programs underneath it, uh, whether it's TGR EDU or CREATE. Uh, we have our TGR Live that they run the events that we have. And quite frankly, it's uh, something we're very excited about. We've, we've helped hundreds of thousands of kids through our programs and our STEM curricula, but that's going to change. With our new digital platform we're, we're, we're rolling out, we're literally going to affect millions of kids around the world. This is going to be free education for kids around the world and something I'm very proud of, and I know my, my dad would be very proud of too. You ever imagine you'd be able to do that much good no. just from being a golfer? No, I mean, no, not even when I first started, no. Even when I first started the foundation, no. Um, not even 10 years ago, no. Uh, because, you know, quite frankly, we didn't have the platforms to do it. Uh, yeah, we could help thousands and obviously hundreds of thousands, uh, but literally affect change in millions of kids around the world. 
we didn't have the technology for that, but now we do. We have the digital platforms to do that, and we're rolling that out now. Why'd you get rid of the vowels? I think you probably can figure it out what it is. <laughs> 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 even, though you went to, even though you went to USC. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> tough for me. <laughs> hey, I, I deserve it. You know, we lost that game. Tiger, thank you so <laughs> you much. Got it, absolutely. Good luck. Thank, you, thank you so much Appreciate for doing it. this.